What's going on, family? Welcome into the Friday edition of the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Game Be- Game Day Playbook Preview Show. I am your host, James Grande. I am joined by Henry Wilson. You can follow Henry on the old X machine at Henry Thirteen Wilson Thirteen. You can follow me on the old X machine at the underscore real underscore Grande. Some would call me the king of underscores. Some would call Henry. The king of all Alex Rodriguez fans. What's going on, Henry? What's what's new on this Friday? Uh, the Friday heading into the weekend. Any big plans for the weekend, or are we just grinding out some baseball? Just you know, grinding out some baseball. Obviously, you know, enjoying a little bit of the beginning of football season too. We love some you yeah. know college football. NFL's going strong now. We're going into week two, but uh, still just full swing baseball. You know, and uh, really excited. We have got a good slate for us Friday. Full eleven games, so should be a lot of fun. 11 games on the slate, as you mentioned. Um, looking at things, we are back in Coors Field, so we have that on the docket as the Cubs. Cubs. Uh, fun, fun, I would say a fun team in Coors. I feel like we haven't had many fun teams in Coors of late, and even when like Baltimore was there, they kind of sucked when they were on the main slate. So <laughs> yeah. um, this will be fun. Again, 11 games uh, for those – for. You know, first-time watchers out there still grinding MLB MLB DFS with Henry and I. Please drop a like on the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if because if you guys like baseball, if you like football, soon to be basketball season, uh, almost a month away, October twenty second, the kickoff of basketball. We have videos, podcasts, preview shows, shorts. I mean, everything on the channel. You won't miss. Anything in seasonal for DFS, whatever we have it here. So make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Um, you ready to get into things, Henry? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, we do break the slate down uh, for those watching for the first time, position by position. So we are going to start at the pitcher spot here. Uh, and I'm just going to go right to it. Right to it. I understand there's a whole bunch of guys over 9K. We don't have anyone at 10K. But Jacob DeGrom... The former best pitcher in baseball, without a without a doubt, for multiple seasons pre uh, all these injuries, is making his season debut. He has only pitched ten innings in the minor leagues. Um, there is has not been a lot of pitches in those starts, but ten innings looked good. Fifteen batters. Any thought to Jacob Degrom, or are we just happy to see him pitching on a major league mound again? Well, yes, very excited to just watch him. I would consider it, I think. I like, <laughs> I know it, it, it's tough because it's 8,500 and you know he's going to be limited. Like, the most yes. he's thrown is four innings so far in the minors while he's rehabbing. So, like, best case scenario, you're getting five innings out of him, right? Like, that's best case scenario. And there's a good chance that it's not even five. But it's Jacob DeGrom and facing Seattle. Like, how many points could Jacob DeGrom put up in four innings? It could be a lot. <laughs> That is the that's like the tough part for me because he's in Seattle, the team that yeah. strikes out more than any other team in Major League Baseball. And like even when you look at it's crazy when you even just like look at it just simply when you look at Seattle's road stats versus home stats, their strikeout rate at home goes up three percent. It's twenty nine percent in Seattle. So like um, I'm trying to pull up the exact number of pitches he threw in the, in the last game. Um, he threw, uh, all right, baseball reference. Thank you for loading. Um, he threw, yeah. Um, I mean, he threw 49. Pitches. He, yeah. yeah. He threw 49 pitches. Yeah. He's, and he's, he's probably never going to be a long goal for this. Like at 60 is like his max, I feel like, but he could strike out 10 in four innings with 60 pitches. Like that's the Grom. So I don't know. That, the upside that's, is for sure limited, though. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to the top. Uh, I'm gonna, we'll, you know, good to see Jacob DeGrom back. Very yes. risky. If you're playing 20 to 150 lineups, you know, it's not a bad idea. If you're playing single entry, you're probably not going there. Uh, especially when we get back to the top. Uh, we do have Dylan Cease heading into San Francisco. Freddie Peralta is there, 97. Really tough spot for him. Uh, Yusei Kikuchi gets a... Um, you know, a tough spot against the Angels, who've been really good against lefties again. Uh, Spencer Schwellenbach gets a really spot. I mean, the the clear cut, number one with a bullet here, is Dylan Cease, no? 
Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I just think the you know, the upside that he provides against the Giants, they strike out a ton. They have not been good against righties. Obviously, there's been some volatility to cease, like yes. some bad starts. So obviously there's risk there. But look, the fact is I really don't like any of the other three up here Agreed. in these matchups either. Like I, I don't love Cease in this spot, but man, I love him a whole lot more than everybody else. Cause like I'm not touching Freddie Peralta against the Diamondbacks. No. And yeah, Kikuchi against the Angels. Like yeah, Peralta's been bad, and the Diamondbacks get crap out of me. Kikuchi, I like you know has some upside, but yeah, Angels can crush lefties. So like yeah, I'm definitely going to be rolling with Cease here at the top, just because I think he has the upside, and the matchup scares me so much less than the rest of these guys. Yeah, I think what you just said is the reason why if if you're playing anyone over nine K, we know Dylan Cease is going to be extremely popular too. That that's yeah. not going to be. Something that's like, wow, that's surprising. Dylan, he's 50% owned in single entries. Um, I suspect Kikuchi gets some ownership. I agree on your 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 assessment of, like, there's obviously a ceiling. I mean, he's had a lot of big strikeout games this year. Yeah. Uh, but the Angels are, once again, crushing left-handed pitching. Uh, yep. Taylor Ward, Zach Nato have, ha- have been absolute monsters lately. Yep. So, um, you know, there is home run. There is inherent risk with Kikuchi, too. When we dip below nine thousand dollars, excluding Jacob Degrom from this equation, like where is your exposure starting? Like, what's your who's your first name you're targeting, or who are a couple names that you're targeting? I mean, number one is Bailey Obert, and it's not close. He's my yeah. favorite pitcher on this slate. Like, he's my top guy for being eighty six hundred. I just, again, with like a lot of those over nine K guys being ones I don't really trust, like Bailey Obert being down here at eighty six hundred, he's have been awesome all season. Like, sure, he's had a couple rough starts. That one against Atlanta recently was tough. But dude just been consistently great. He's been piling up the strikeouts. He's just looked really good all season. I love how he's bounced back. And, like, look at that seven innings with seven strikeouts. One hit against the Royals. Like, come on. Does, get a win. Does not get a win. Does not get a win in that game, by the way. Yeah. That's the problem is the Twins have sucked lately. Yeah, they have been. Like, done. getting a win for him has been – extremely difficult but look it's against the reds they're easy matchup i just trust him so much as a pitcher he is my clear favorite on today's slate 12 12 and 6 hasn't won in five hasn't won uh since august 9th five consecutive Ooh. starts it's pretty brutal um yeah i love bailey over here uh i don't mind tanner bybee either that would probably be yes. the other guy in the ak tier for me and it's just the upside that you get when you face tampa since the since the yeah. trade deadline uh, they're striking out over 26% of the time against right-handed pitching. That lineup is is not any good. Once you get past, like, Yandy, once you get past Brandon Lau, who's even hurt and struggling, and Caminero, who's been uh, up and down since being called up, and then after that, Josh Lowe, and then the rest of it. And even all those guys are, like, question marks. So I think yeah. 5 at 83 makes a lot of sense. Obviously, a lot of win equity behind him as well. Um oh. I don't think there's anything else here. I mean, Schmidt looked really good in his debut. Don't really want to test those waters against Boston. On the flip side, Hauk, eh, like, eh, he's pitched a little better of late, um, but obviously a tough spot. Yeah. Those, and, those and he might tough. not even start. And it's yeah. being lined up. That's that's a little scary. Yep. I think, I think both Hauk and Schmidt like have the upside. Like I can see the reasonings for going after them. Like both the Red Sox and Yankees offenses have been struggling recently, but do you still want to go after them? Like in Yankee stadium, they're still like can put up good numbers and uh, yeah, like there is a little upside, but they scare me a little too much to really want to go after him. I'm not going to use, honestly, I don't care if Tanner Hauk went in through a perfect game. I am not using someone who has claimed to have a dead arm. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no chance. Especially There's, like if his splitter's not working, then like he's toast. That's when the home so, runs. Yeah, I mean, Judge, Judge yeah. Soto, forget it. It's going to be a deficit very early in that game, um, and then you get the Red Sox bullpen, which is obviously good for the Yankees too. Um, under eight thousand dollars, we have uh, Emerson Hancock returning or projected to return to the Seattle Mariners for this game. Um, Landon Knack gets the Braves. Eric Fetty. Toronto, is there anything down here? I, what, like, what do you see? I don't think so. I hate all of this. Like this, <laughs> this is ugly. It's really ugly. Like 
I I think people are going to be intrigued at Garrett Crochet being under 7K just because, like, we know what Garrett Crochet has done. But, like, he's been not good. He's going to be limited to 60 pitches. Uh, so even, like, I, no, I can't do it. Beyond that, like, Eduardo Rodriguez is probably the, like, he's probably the best pitcher that's down here. But, man, Milwaukee is really good. And look at that. Like, last two games, negative points. I just... And now he has to face Milwaukee. Like, it's not an easier matchup than the Dodgers and Houston. So it's not like he's getting a break. I I don't think I can go for any of these pitchers that are under AK. Um, This would be the only – this would be the guy. Sure. Right here. Yeah, he is $4,000 okay. <laughs> against the White Sox. I'm going to tell you this right now. He's going to be the most popular pitcher on the slate if he's starting. No, it's fair. I mean, it's the White Sox. Like, I might be able to go get positive points against the White Sox. And Dude, I've... he is four thousand dollars against the White Sox, coming yeah. off six shutout. He yeah. is undoubtedly. I don't even. I don't even have to look at what Bradley Basso has done in the minors. <laughs> no, I don't. I. I'm telling you right now, I don't even care what he's done in the minors. He is four thousand dollars against the White Sox. That's a lock and load. That is a that is a lock and load. If if he's going to be stretched out, like he was six innings, eighty five pitches, not even a question. Don't even I don't even care. I, I don't care. Yeah, I I'm I'm with you. And again, that's part of like why the rest of the under eight K is not like I don't want to do because not why would I pay yeah. the seven thousand for all those guys in there when I can just go all the way down to four thousand and take him who is probably going to get more points than any of those guys in that 7, 6K tier. And even if he doesn't, even if he has 10 fantasy points, he's $4,000. Yeah. He like, he's about half the price of Otani. <laughs> like, I, I, like I, I'm, I usually am like the first person to just get like frustrated when so, like a chalk pitcher against the White Sox hit just because it's like, oh, I'm just going to play this person because the White Sox. Like, I stacked the White Sox against Ben Lively last week. It didn't work. He also got taken out after two innings. But, like, this is different. He is minimum salary. Yeah. And is fully stretched out and has allowed two earned runs in his first, like, 10 major league innings, right? So, yeah, it just and is what it is. is. A lot of these other pitchers that people have been going after as shock against the White Sox, like, their price has been inflated. Like, all these Correct. not very good pitchers, you're having Correct. to pay a lot because they're facing the White Sox. So, it – Hasn't really made sense. Now you get one for 4K. I'm just going to uh, lock him into our lineup. For all those that don't know, yes. we do build a lineup at the end of the show. We're just going to start there. And uh, yes. we're just going to move through the positions um, as we go. But we're going to start, uh, what's his name? Brady Basso. A solid, solid baseball name. Um, yeah. Solid baseball name. Um, let's go to catcher where uh, William Contreras tops the list. Uh, I know you are a big spend down at catcher kind of guy. Would you break that rule for anybody above 4K? Uh, yeah, maybe on your Diaz. Uh, I just I like this matchup for Houston. Uh, he just continues to hit well, locked in the middle of that lineup, and again, the 4700 is not crazy a lot. So I could see, especially do, like if I'm doing an Astros stack, I'm willing to pay up there. Yeah, I would. I like on your Diaz quite a bit. I would. I would just say Austin Wells. Um, yeah, he's been awesome. He's been awesome. And if Tanner Houck, again, if Tanner Houck has a dead arm plus a, a bad Red Sox bullpen, dude, they yeah. hit Austin Wells fourth. Like, yeah. they have the option to hit Stanton and they have the option to hit Jazz Chisholm there, and they don't. They hit Austin Wells there, right? So that goes to show you there's just he's better. Stack, like, the stackability is better. The lineup positioning is better. So yeah. um, that would be my guy over 4K. When we dip below $4,000, uh, any thought to El Gary here, uh, or do we just simply say, well, we have we've liked the Cubs catchers to begin with. Now we have Cubs catchers in course. I mean, Miguel Amaya thirty five hundred, Christian Bethencourt thirty three. Whichever starts, we just plug and play. They both kind of been good lately, right? Yeah, you you read my mind. It's it is it's Gary Sanchez or the Cubs catcher. Like that's the options here. That's one hundred percent where I'm going. Like I, yeah, I could see going to Gary Sanchez just because. The power's good. He's been hitting awesome. But if you want to save a little extra money, like uh, a lot of the you know Cubs guys are getting boosted a little bit in price, but like these catchers are still super cheap. And again, we've been kind of going to them even not in cores. So why not take these really cheap plays while they're in cores? Yeah, I mean religiously, I 
we have literally just done segments of our show on catcher just being like plug whoever the catcher is in chicago and then move on um, yeah now they have like amaya has struggled a lot more he was hitting for a while he was hitting like 400 um uh, and there was i mean look i mean he had six multi-hit games or five multi-hit games in six in six games so like yeah he slowed down but again we've seen it and this is against gomber right. in course right. so why not i, I I just I would probably play like a Jeromo or, or someone like that, uh, but or like Hunter Goodman who's been recalled and uh, he had a couple of hits on the on the Thursday slate, so um, yeah. I would I would play both those guys as well. Uh, let's go to first where a more appealing position exists. We will be able to spend up on anyone we would like to today, considering there's no 10k plus pitcher and we're using um, Basso at four thousand dollars. Is this an Otani spot for you? Um, is this in any first baseman over 5k position? For you? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I like a couple of guys up here, you know, especially with having a pitcher at 4k, I would be willing to spend a 7k on Otani today. Just like yeah. it is a crazy amount, but he's just going crazy. And obviously he's pushing for 50, 50. So like, right. It seems like he's swinging for the fences. If he's on, he's running for second base. Like the value is there. Um, so I could see that. But I also like, you know, Vladdy Jr. I like Toronto Day um, going against Fetty. I think they're a sneaky stack. Um, obviously, he's slowed down a little bit recently. But, man, he's just been so good all, like, second half of the season. Uh, I also like Matt Olson. Uh, yes. Landon Mack is not great. Um, and so the power that Olson provides, 5,100, feels like a pretty good play as well. Yeah, he has a knack to give up home runs. So, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh he, he a lot of fly balls uh, i target landon Nack mm-hmm. quite a bit so and, and you know matt olson obviously not having a good year but like we know the power's there yeah, i would 25 homers for being like a really right. down year for him uh speaking of 25 home runs i would play Christian walker this is a we know freddie peralta has been a reverse splits guy all year and actually Christian walker this is like the first time in his career he's been a reverse splits hitter he has largely hit lefties his whole career He's crushing righties this year. I would also throw um, Walker into that mix. And probably Tolia. I know Tolia is expensive. I know he's yeah. struggling a little bit. But uh, in Coors Field, $5,000, I'd probably give him a look. Um, moving down the list a little bit, we do have Michael Bush against a lefty. I don't, you know, maybe. Uh, we'll see about Bush. What else in the mid-tier piques your interest, if anything? Uh, I like Josh Naylor. Uh, latell has been pretty bad lately. Yes. Uh, I just think Naylor just keeps producing great numbers. Um, so I think that's a pretty good matchup at 4,500. Um, after that, man, Spencer Horwitz is just crushing the ball right now. He is. He is. Yeah. So like 4,100 going against Eric Fetty. Uh, like that, that's, I think, a really good cheaper option here if you don't want to spend up at first. Here, Here's my thing. Again, I've been talking to John a lot about this. Why are we losing eligibilities here? Why it's is Vladdy so not nice. third? And why is Horowitz not second? Or why are one of them multi-position eligible? Because if we're playing DraftKings, you have to make a decision there. You cannot yeah. play You cannot play Horowitz and Vladdy. And I would say, I know the savings is obviously on the Horowitz side, but Spencer Horowitz is not Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So, like, yes, losing that MPE kind of sucks for, for if you're interested in using Blue Jays. I don't get it because, like, why are we taking away eligibility from a guy who has played those positions this Correct. season? But Shohei Otani gets first in outfield, both of which he has not played this year. It's been my argument. It's been like, my argument for the last. Come on. Yeah, it's well, a little frustrating. I'm not even like that frustrated that Otani has first in outfield. But if you're gonna Correct. do that, why are you taking away this eligibility from these other guys? Agreed. I think right. it, there has there has to be a there has to you have to have it both. You cannot have it both ways. You, can, you if you're gonna have Otani first in outfield. Well, then we have to give players that have played at other positions the MP as well. So, yeah, um, pretty pretty frustrating. Agreed, um, but nevertheless, if you want to use Harwitz, um, you're not playing Vladdy, uh, or yeah. or you're playing multiple, or you're playing multiple tough. lineups. Um, sub four thousand dollars. Anything that really stands out to you? Uh, you know, Reese Hoskins. Uh, I know he's been struggling. That's why his price is down here. But man, this is really cheap for Reese Hoskins uh, going against a lefty. Um, he still just provides some power. And if Eduardo continues to struggle, um, I think he is an, an okay option down here. But beyond that, there's not a whole lot I love on the cheap, cheap end of first. Yeah, it's it's that's a he's a home runner bust. 
um, yeah. for sure. Uh, Charles LeBlanc, depending on where he's hitting in the lineup, they've hit sure. him third before. I would also say I'm not against using someone like Seth Brown. And the only reason I say that is because we know Crochet's only going 50 pitches. Yeah, 60 pitches. Those, period. If those pitches happen in three innings, and you're telling me six innings of the White Sox bullpen, plus like kind of a diminished version of Crochet, obviously not the same guy he was early in the year. I'm yeah. not against I'm not against a really probably unowned Oakland offense so yeah um manzardo manzardo 27 oh, yeah. manzardo. i forgot about he, manzardo yeah, he, he's been really good um but i don't think there's anything else that we need to look at so let's go to second go back to the top of the list um Cattell Marte has returned and Cattell Marte took a few games to get his 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 uh footing but he looks just okay um six thousand dollars for Marte we have Altuve, who is, you know, not did not play Thursday, um, but we'll see if he's in the lineup on the Friday slate against Aldegiri. Mika Horner over 5K uh, in cores. Any of those guys, or are you just living? Uh, this has been largely a position that we've either lived in like the lower mid tier to value section, uh, mostly. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably doing the same today just because there are so many good cheap options I like. Like, I'm not afraid of playing Marte even. Like, right. I know it's 6K and it's not even against a lefty and Freddie Peralta. But, like, Marte's been so good. And okay. I, like, Freddie Peralta has really been pretty bad. Like, I would still go with some Diamondbacks against him. Like, I don't right. trust him right now. And the Diamondbacks have been crazy good. Um, so I could see that. But most likely, I just like the cheap options better. Yeah, Glaber 38, he's going to lead off. Gavin Lux, 37. Yep. He's slowed down, but um, he's been fine. Good. Yeah, um, Brendan Donovan has been really, really good. Pinch hit home run on Thursday. Uh, he continues to roll. Yep, Will Wagner. Uh, Will Wagner is going to hit yeah. right oh, uh, in the – yep, yep, both those guys. Julian, he's going to – they'll lead Julian off. I know yeah. Minnesota's obviously been bad, but he is a powerful dude that mm -hmm. plays second base. You don't really find that like thirty one hundred dollars leading off at second. That's like kind of a, a rarity. So, yeah. um, I think that's in play. Is there anything else or? Nah. No, that that's pretty much it. But I mean, that's a lot of options. I like all those, of those. Like Lux, Wagner, Geloff, Julian. Like those are all options I would play today. Let's focus on third base, where there are a bunch of guys over five thousand dollars. Six. Players, Jose Ramirez, Rafael Devers, Jazz Chisholm Jr., Ryan McMahon, Manny Machado, Royce Lewis. If you had to pick between these top six names, is there any one in particular that stands out? Two in particular that stands out? Like, what do you make sense of this 5K tier? I like McMahon. I think 5,300, like, in course against Assad, I, I I would have figured his price would be inflated even more. Um, I think he's been hitting pretty well recently, and so uh, I think that this is cheap enough that I, I'm willing to go for McMahon here in Coors. I like I like that. Yeah, definitely like McMahon. Um, I'm I'm honestly not going to tell you no on basically anyone. Uh, maybe yeah. Machado, but like Machado's been really good recently. Been really good. So um, probably that's the only one that I omit but even then i'd be like perfectly fine with it i want i want to get your opinion as we drop below 5k isak parides has been probably one of the most disappointing baseball players in the league looks a little better apparently he's playing through an injury um that's like kind of has been not announced as an injury and he's playing through something he's looked better of late like very very late like three game sample in la he was good right yeah he is very good against left-handed pitching and it's cores he's gonna be popular would you like put parides in the same breath as these other guys or ahead of like how would you assess parides at forty nine hundred dollars i don't I don't think I really want to do it. I just like, again, if he's really struggling with an injury, I, I don't know if he's going to bounce back and do a whole lot for the rest of the season. And this is a guy that 
yeah, it's been disappointing, but like I haven't been that surprised by it. Like yeah. I w last year when he was awesome, I figured like that was a career year for him. That he was not <laughs> going to ever be better than that. He yeah. does not have real power. Like he has a good hit tool, but like he just doesn't have anything spectacular. So like even in Coors, like I think this price is too high. I'd rather just for the same price take Max Muncy, who I think is a much better hitter and way better homer potential. I I'm just going to turn there, even though the Paredes is in Coors. I mean, you will get Muncy at one twentieth the ownership, right? Uh, because yeah. Schwellenbach's a very good pitcher, and yep. Paredes is in and Paredes in course, right? Um, I probably, I'll probably that's probably a spot I diff I I differ from you. I probably <laughs> would play Paredes. Not that I don't think Max Muncy. We just saw it. The Dodgers hit three home runs in a row. They hit four first inning home runs. Like, yeah. They have as much home run upside as any other team in baseball. So, like, I'm never, ever, ever going to suggest not playing the Dodgers. Just personally, I think I would lean Breedies in that spot. So maybe yeah. we'll, we'll we'll chime in if you're if you're watching this video. Leave leave a comment in the chat. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll turn to FA Nation for the the final the final vote getter on Breedies versus Max Muncy. Um, so leave leave your comment in the chat uh, as we continue our ascend down the third base position. Eugenio Suarez continues to be an absolute dog. Um, and this is, this had to be the most unexpected turn of the year. I, I don't, I, I am telling you, I think that this has been one of the most surprising things I've seen all year long in baseball. Um, I don't, I don't know what has gotten into him, uh, but he did not like hearing he was going to lose his job. I'll tell you that. Um, yeah. He took that, he took that. Where's the Michael Jordan meme? Like he took that so personally. Um, so 4,800 for, for him in the good split against Peralta. Uh, Alex Bregman has been really good. They led him off without Jose Altuve on Thursday. He gets the lefty in Aldegiri. He's been better against righties, but it is worth noting he, he could be leading off here. Um, Jay, uh, Josh Young, 4,200 gets Emerson Hancock. What, what do we like in this 4K range? Yeah, I, I really like this middle of 4K. Like you said, Suarez, the way he is hitting – like I'm absolutely willing to ride the hot hand against Peralta who has like struggled with some Homer problems too. And like, I mean, we've seen it. This guy was the best Homer hitter for a stretch. Like right. not just, I mean, just like seasons stretch, right. not just like but in Cincinnati when he played, when he played in Cincy. Yeah. So he's got real power. It's been awesome to watch, but also yeah, Bregman, especially like I said, I like the Astros as a stack. So like if I am, I, Bregman's been awesome. I also think Matt Chapman's been crushing the ball recently. Like he yep. signed that contract and decided yep. he's going to immediately prove that he's worth it. Uh, and like we said, I like we like Cease, but he has been volatile too. So if you're not starting him, like I'm not shying away from Chapman here either. Yeah, Cease Cease hasn't looked this. I've said it a couple times. Cease hasn't looked the same since the no hitter. Since he yeah. was extended in that no hitter, he has not looked the same. It was like his last um, really good start, basically. Yeah, it was his last. Yeah, it was basically his last. Right. Um, and then I think there was like a delay in there too. So he has not had a lot of good luck um, uh, since the, you know the best start of his career. So um, going down below four thousand uh, dollars, we do have Patrick Wisdom. I don't know if he'll be in the lineup. He'll probably be in the lineup. If so, I'm sure he'll get ownership because he's in cores. Um, but like. Is there anything else that stands out to you? Uh, Joey Ortiz hits lefties really well at 3,300. I'd be willing to give him a look. I, I do play him quite a bit when there's lefty on the mound. What about you, Henry? Uh, yeah, I agree with the Ortiz. I also like him against lefties. I also like the these cheap Toronto guys still. Uh, you know, Ernie yep. Clement or Addison Barger. Like, I think both. Uh, just I, again, I've just been loving these cheap Toronto guys because his yep. offense keeps, like, scoring runs, and these guys are so cheap. I mean, even if they – like, and, and – it, it has been, you know, weirdly, like we've been re weirdly reliant on a bad team uh, because the Blue Jays are obviously like bad, but yeah, their, their price doesn't budge, right? And they do exactly. give you a lot of flexibility. So, well, they have. They've they've all been multi position eligible. They've all been super cheap. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's been you don't want to go do a five man Toronto staff. No. Like they're not no. they're not good enough to be putting no. a bunch of them. But like they provide enough value that when you right. need a cheap guy and you want to throw one or two of them in there, they're just really easy guys to turn to. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. So let's go over. Oh, uh, uh, Kevin Biggio is on another team. I don't know how he keeps doing how he keeps finessing his way into another contract. But I I thought that was interesting. I didn't even realize Atlanta signed him until I saw him hitting uh, yesterday. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, that one shocked me as well. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> that, that, that was like, they didn't want to put it on the wire. They didn't want to be embarrassed. So they're like, <laughs> uh, guys, we're signing him, but just don't like, they'll just, we'll, just everyone will see it when he's in the lineup. Like, yeah. like we, don't, we don't need <laughs> to broadcast. Won't notice. <laughs> um, shortstop. Elliot Cruz, I'm not assuming we're in on, but like, we're also, you know, he has as much, he has an ups, as high an upside as anyone else in baseball. Sure, um, so yeah. if you want to play him, sure. But it is a really tough spot against Bailey Ober. I think Ezekiel Tovar is interesting. Um, it, yeah, it will be interesting. A little too high of a price, though. It, it, it is. It is, it is. But, you know, like, it is a very obviously good ballpark to hit in. We'll, we'll see. And I'm sure there's, I mean, Dansby Swanson is $900 cheaper. Yeah, um, that's why well, I'd rather just course. take Swanson. Who's, who's been better? Objectively, he's been better than Ezekiel Tovar lately as well. So yeah. um, he'll, he'll be the more popular option. I say this. I do I do always want to like just say it once when we're talking cores. You will always get the Rockies at lower ownership. There's obviously a reason why the Rockies yeah. will be lower owned because they're not a good baseball team. But like <laughs> it's still a, a situation where they're still in an advantageous spot in their ballpark, right? So – they're not yep. cheap and they're in their home and they're going to be low. Owned. So like you can always take a shot on them. Uh, I love Zach Nato against a lefty. I will play Zach Nato against yep. basically any lefty that's not named Scooble or sale. Um, yeah. Anything else in the mid tier that's like worth our time or should we just keep going, going down the list here? Uh, Jeremy Pena too, getting a face in the lefty. Um, I uh, don't know. I always like I, the lefty. Uh, I know he's been like really painful. It's been like, dude, it, it's been tough. I know, but like he's good against lefties. I this is, this is he has been my arch nemesis. I cannot for the life of me get this man correct. Like I've gotten to a point where I'm if I'm stacking Astros against lefties and and I know he's hitting fourth, I'm just like, all right, who's hitting fifth? Because I'm just gonna skip <laughs> over him in my stack. I, I can't get him right. I, I cannot get him right. Um, but yeah, I mean, he is a good play, forty two hundred dollars. He's just my arch nemesis. Uh, there's nothing that, yeah. nothing you can do about it. Um, I know he's not facing a lefty here. What do we make of Tommy Edmonds back to back uh, double don? I mean, again, he has been a legitimately like good to really good hitter against left-handed pitching throughout his career. He has been an average hitter against righties, but he has been really good for the Dodgers lately. Um, there's obviously stolen base equity built in with Tommy Edmund against a righty. Would you like, would you consider Edmund in your Dodger stacks or just Edmund in general? Yeah, potentially. I definitely like, I'm a big fan. Tommy Edmund was the cover of my playbook on Wednesday and then he went on to hit two homers, but that was also, he was 3,700 and he was facing a lefty. lefty. Yep. So like, this is a little different. His priced up a little more, not facing the lefty, which means, is he going to be lower down in the lineup also? Like potentially. Yep. So like, oh, there's a lot of factors that make me less excited about him than I was when he then went and hit those two homers. Right. But I do still think, like he's not just a lefty killer. Like he can hit righties too, and he just he provides the speed. Also, like you said, that I could see at four thousand still trying to get him in my lineup. Four home runs, five runs scored, eight RBIs, two stolen bases in his five in his last five games. Seems like a good trade for the Dodgers. There seems like the Cardinals are probably missing that player. Um, yes. Below four thousand uh, dollars. Talk to me about uh, shortstop if there's anything you like. Uh. Brian Rocchio has been hitting pretty yep. well. 2,800, again, don't trust Littell. And this is a guy who, you know, was a prospect that with some pedigree. Um, he's kind of had a rough start into the majors, but I think he could still, like, turn into a decent hitter. Um, we've been seeing it recently. So at 2,800, uh, he's definitely my favorite of the, like, punt shortstop plays. Yeah, a little, little um, speed, too. So yeah. someone that can steal you a base. Uh, I will throw uh, – I don't trust Aguiar, and I – I understand that Brooks Lee's been kind of bad of late. Uh, maybe some signs of life in his last game with that two-run double. So sure. um, I would I would potentially bunt with uh, Brooks Lee again. Aguiar does not get um, strikeouts. He allows a lot of fly balls. Um, and he still only made like three starts above double A in his whole career. So um, I, I would throw Brooks Lee into that equation as well. A position that is often one that we'd like to spend on uh, heading into the outfield 
I think this is going to be one of the more interesting ones because the Cubs have 27 outfielders in Coors Field <laughs> that you're going to want to play. Um, and this is one of my, like, talking points about, like, why certain teams have eligibilities and others don't. I mean, that's just not right. There's there They do yeah. not play four outfielders every day. All four of these players play every day. They yeah. do not all play the outfield at the same time. That is not a legal rule in baseball. So why does Bellinger that out first base? Or say to have first. is normally DHing. He, give him first base because he DHs like Otani does. Like what? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean th- this is this this type of situation is what makes things frustrating because um, when you look at the when you look at the way that um, the pitcher position is um, or the outfield position is rather. The Cubs are incredibly appealing. 5,800 for Bellinger, 57 for Suzuki, 53 for Hap. I'd play all three of them. Um, I'd probably rank Saya number one, Hap number two, Bellinger number three. Also, Bellinger's been hitting home runs lately. So, like, um, but, like, where would you rank those outfielders amongst, like, you know, the all these other beasts, Otani, Judge, Soto, Betts, Jaron Duran, Jordan, like, where do you think the Cubs fit into the equation when you're talking about the top outfielders? Yeah, I think they're right up there. Obviously, if you have the money, I'd rather go get Otani and Betts, you know, like that. If I can get that duo of Dodgers, sure, like you're going to get there. But like, Judge and Soto have been kind of both slumping lately. Like this Yankees offense has been dead. So I, even if like the prices were a little closer, I would probably just bypass them and go to the Cubs outfielders. Um, So I, I think if you're not going for those Dodgers guys, I'm probably just doing the Cubs. Obviously, I like Houston too. So, like the Jordan and Kyle Tucker, um, it, but you know, you don't worry about the lefty lefty with those. No. But I still think no. I would probably put the Cubs above them, just barely still too. I just like these Cubs outfielders. Is it not crazy to you that the longest streak of Aaron Judge's uh, career has been 15 games without a home run? Yeah, that is that's that is abs- that is that is that doesn't seem right. Um, doesn't seem legal. He, I don't know. No one, no one's ever called him out for steroids. Maybe I am. Um, just kidding. No, I'm um, I'm a Yankees fan, so of course I'm not. Um, let's go down the rest of this 5K tier. Brent Rooker has a lefty plus the White Sox bullpen. That's appealing. Uh, Tyler O'Neill is hitting so many home runs. If you think that he can do it, um, 30 home runs and 59 RBIs is absolutely hysterical. But 30 home runs. Nevertheless, I cannot believe he has less than two X the RBIs than he it's but it's crazy. Neither <laughs> neither here nor there. Uh Corby has been great, obviously, for a pretty extended period of time. What else like even extending down into like the four K tier, like what's your what are some of your favorite plays here in the outfield? Uh yeah, also, Taylor Ward, again, facing the lefty, he has been just a beast. Uh absolutely a monster. Uh, so I, I really like caring with him. I'm so glad he's turned it around. I was so worried of just like, man, is Taylor Ward dead? Or is it just like you're stuck playing with the Angels? And I think it's just he's <laughs> stuck playing with the Angels. That's painful because, yeah, he looks legit. Uh, I also like Jock Peterson. Uh, again, loving loving the Diamondbacks even even against a good pitcher here. And he just, I get 4,400. Like he just consistently is producing. When he's facing a righty, he should be more than this. Love Jock Jams, love Ward, love both those calls. Uh, Chorio would be a play for me at forty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, he has obviously been an elite power speed guy um, for like the second whole entire second half of the year. All mm-hmm. nine of his last or in his last ten games, all nine hits he's had have been extra bases. I mean, he is just an extra base machine. Um, plus, obviously, twenty stolen bases is not too bad. So um, that would be the other guy that I'd. Probably mix into the equation. Um, yeah. Kind of look to see it. Uh, Lane Thomas day. has been yes. finally turning things around. He's been a beast. He's, I think, he's forty-one. Yeah, there. he's been crushing. And this is a guy, obviously, that we expected a lot from him at the beginning of the season, and it's been rough for both teams so far. But now, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, here's the Lane Thomas we thought we were going to see this season. Yeah, and and he was. I mean. You know, the Guardians were expected to make a deal. I think it was a little surprising when Lane Thomas was the, the asset that they acquired. Um, but I liked it. He just looked horrible. He played he was in a platoon when he as yeah. for the first or the last month, and then he just stopped hasn't stopped hitting. So um salute to Lane Thomas. I agree. 
Uh, Michael Harris is someone that I definitely have interest in at four thousand dollars, hitting atop the the Braves lineup against Landon Knack. We didn't really talk like much Braves. Um, Orlando Arcia, I didn't. We didn't talk about a short. Um, uh, Marcelo Zuna here. Um, oh, yeah. is, there, is there a there's a weather icon here? Solaire, like all these guys are a little bit interesting in the outfield. Definitely. And at various positions, just given the out the fly balls and stuff that Landon Knack's allowed. Um, I, I've said this, like, I said this, I think, last night. I don't care who he's facing. If Lawrence Butler is going to remain around this price for absolutely no reason that I can possibly think of, um, I don't care that Garrett Crochet's on the mound necessarily. I would be perfectly fine going back to the well at $4,000, considering we're going to get, you know, the White Sox bullpen for half the game, more than half the game. So I, I think Butler's in my player bullet. No, I'd agree. It's uh it's it's pretty rare lately that I'm not considering like Butler, Rooker, and Blade at least right. a little bit. Like right. I just, you know, and especially, yeah, but why is he this cheap? It's just come on. I know. I, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's no, it's absurd. Um I nothing else. Um under four thousand dollars. Uh let's talk some value. What do we got? Any anything really stand out to you? Um I don't know if they're going to start Randall Gritchuk against the righty against Peralta, but man, that dude's been mashing. Uh, yeah, he's been <laughs> a lot of home runs. Uh, but yeah. I, I kind of doubt they give him the start, though. So likely he's not in the lineup. If he is, think about it. Uh, Lars Newtbar, though, will be yep. in the lineup against Gosman. He's also been looking much better recently, hoping that this is him turning around and he keeps hitting well. Yeah, he's been great. Uh, Yastrzemski's been much better of late. If you're out on Cease, I think that's a, a fine pivot. Um, Kelnick has been better ish. Um, had yeah. a, had a string of like a bunch of hits. Yeah. Better ish. Uh, Trevor Larnack and Matt Walner, they're both perfectly fine. Um, plays. I feel like it's hard to get those players, right? Like you play Larnack, Walner's going to Homer. You play Walner, Larnack's going to Homer. You play them both. Oh, for six combined. Like it's just, Yeah. Throw us a That's bone the here, twins guys. recently. I feel like the twins, the twins have been like killing me. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, it's the twins in general. You're right. Um, any, I don't know if there's like anything else that like really stands out. Like the Astros guys are always so cheap down here. Yeah, um, Seth They've Brown been recently though. Like the bottom of the Astros lineup has been like just dead awful. weight. <laughs> yeah, awful, awful. Um, Paven Smith has a three home run game. Yeah, I mean. Hit half his home runs this year in one game. I don't think you know that's going to happen again. But if you want it, again, but yeah. yeah. Um, Jordan Adams homered the other day for. Uh, I mean, he had pretty good numbers. Mostly known for his speed at the minor league level. I mean, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. You're in. We're kind of like in on the Angels here. So yeah. Um. I'd be okay with that. Is there anything else that I missed or that you want to talk about or? No, I don't think so. Uh, nothing okay. else jumped out to me. All right. Uh, I'm a, let's go Bailey Ober. You were very straightforward yeah. top pitcher of the day. Um, and we're playing, I already forget his name, Brady Basso. Um, yeah. 40, uh, nearly $4,700. We're going to have absolutely no issues building here. Um, let's, are we, do we want to go Cubs? Like, are we? Are we? Do you want to start with Cubs here? Sure. I I would. I think I'd want to get some Cubs in again. I I'm usually a person that goes away from Coors. So in a team that I'm actually like interested in, like I feel like I should actually you know get some Cubs in there. <laughs> what, what are we thinking? Amaya Swanson possibly at short, and then yep. and then. I, I mean, I think Hap was my favorite. I think Suzuki was your favorite. I'd do both of them. <laughs> yeah. um, Cubs four-pack with yeah. first, second, third outfield um, remaining. Second base was a position that you and I both agreed upon. We are going to go down into the value tier. Who was your favorite value second baseman? I think my favorite uh, is probably probably Donovan. I think he's just been hitting so well recently, and Gosman's been struggling. Agreed. Um, third base. I mean, you liked McMahon. I, I, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind paying up for McMahon here either, and just getting one on the other side of the game too. Yeah, I, I like it. 
Uh, 47.50 for outfield first. So we could, I mean, we could spend up at first. We could spend up in the outfield. We have whatever direction you really want to go here. Um, or we could just be fair and balanced with both. It, it doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah, I don't hate like going Olsen here. I feel like I want to get someone against Landon Knack. <laughs> you want to do, I mean, we could do a two-man stack against Landon Knack bars and play Ooh. like uh, Olsen Harris with 400 left on the table there. Yeah, I like it. With four Cubs, we have five members of the of the Coors Field game, one off Brendan Donovan and, and two in Atlanta. Do you like that? Yeah, I think that's good. And then that gives you money to play with if you wanted to like upgrade from Donovan or something. You could, and or I, I don't, you know, Spencer even. But yeah, I think that, that looks really good. Yeah. So um, Basso, Ober, Amaya, Olson, Donovan, McMahon, Swanson, Hap, Suzuki, Michael Harris. The second rounds out the lineup. Four hundred dollars remaining on the old DraftKings machine. Eleven game slate on Friday. Um, Henry. Is your man on the playbook? I you get a you get a sneak preview here of of who Henry may or may not like tomorrow when uh or today when the playbook comes comes out. You can catch that playbook on fantasyalarm.com on Friday. You can get that playbook for a with a seven day free trial uh after you sign up for a month um of the All Pro subscription. You'll get seven free days prior to your all pro subscription. So head over to fantasyalarm.com slash win and you, you can use the code let's go. You'll get it less than $20. But before your subscription even starts, you can try us out for seven days. You're, you're not going to leave after those seven days because you're going to like the content so much, especially the MLB DFS playbook that you can find from Henry. But you know, you can scan the QR code you see on the screen below, right there. Um, or you can go to fantasyalarm.com slash win and uh, sign up there using code let's go, get a discount, get the seven day free trial. Um, again, you can follow Henry on the old X machine. You see his handle below as well at Henry 13 Wilson 13. You can follow me at the underscore real underscore grande. Uh, Henry, any final words before we get out of here uh, before Friday sleep? No, let's, uh, let's go kill it. Should be a fun day. Let's go kill it. Should be a fun day. Should should is always the key word that we have to. We, yeah, have to we never know. It's baseball. It's baseball. Every once in a while, it seems fun and it can turn not fun real fast. So you always have to have the should. <laughs> as the great Susan Waldman always says, uh, or uh, as uh, John Sterling always says, uh, that's baseball, Susan. And uh, we'll catch you guys. We'll catch you guys next week with the preview show. Have a good weekend.